It's Trading Tip Tuesday. Let's take a look at some TradingView 101 basics. Had some questions on how to set things up. TradingView is free, so you can always make a free account. There's no reason not to. There's some limited aspects to free accounts versus paid accounts, but for the most part, you can use anything you want to use on a free account. You don't necessarily need a paid account. Uh, TradingView also has a social side of things. If you're ever curious as far as what people are looking at or watching, I very rarely look at any of this stuff or post in any of this stuff. Me personally, I just mainly look at uh, crypto Twitter or Telegram or Discord or wherever else for information like that. So you're going to want to click on chart first. And if you've never charted anything before, you always want to know what you are looking for. So that's called a ticker, whether it be a stock ticker or a crypto ticker. They have various categories here. Sometimes when I type certain things in, it'll pop up on more than just crypto, like Maker, right? MKR is a ticker on not just crypto, but other things. And you can't type in, uh, well, I guess you can. I guess, you, well, I guess you can type in. So some crypto tickers have more than one actual ticker. So Polo uses STR still for Stellar. Most everybody else uses XLM. Another example of this is Kraken's Bitcoin pair initially had the XBT ticker, but you, have, you just have to know what you're looking for. Uh, for the most part, everybody's BTC. You can also look by exchange, not a feature I typically use, but if you only want to chart Binance or Gemini or wherever you are, that's certainly something you can do as well. So if we pull up the BTC chart, it'll always be in the daily chart first. And I believe this is UTC. Yeah. So a lot of people ask about the daily close or how do you even know what a daily close is if there's no daily per se cryptos 24 seven worldwide, right? I believe on training view, the daily close is 8 PM EST currently. And then with stand, uh, DS daylight savings time, DST that'll change slightly but you can always adjust your time zone. Now, I don't think that'll influence daily closes. It'll just influence what's displayed here. The second thing I, I'd always do for crypto is log versus uh, linear. So clicking log in the bottom right here, puts you on log, it'll put you forever on log. I would definitely stick to that. And then me personally, for the background here, I always like the dark theme on everything. I just feel like I can see stuff clearer so you can switch that uh, on the theme. And something else I like to do as well is change the colors on kind of everything. I just like to make them more vibrant, easier to see, help my eyes out a little bit. So I would adjust the colors as needed, right? If you're red, green, colorblind, you're going to need to, need to adjust this probably to something different, right? Um, because you're not going to be able to see some of this stuff as clearly. So definitely adjust it, right? This is all completely modular, customizable. Do whatever you need to do. Don't struggle to see something when it's easily adjustable. Uh, something else I do is change the scales because I'm not blind, but I'm not going to struggle to see stuff again, especially when we're talking about um, sats of something. Um, another important thing to watch for is the precision metric here on the settings. You can change it. Sometimes it'll default won't show you to the eighth decimal. So if you're talking about sats on a BTC pair, sometimes that'll be displayed incorrectly or incompletely. So just keep that in mind. Sometimes you need to force it to go to eight decimals like that. Something else I do for appearance for the videos as well is just have the watermark and you can make that whatever you want, right? Again, this is all about whatever is easiest for you to see. I also don't like um, these grid lines. So you can just make them the same color as the background and they just disappear. I also don't like gradient. So for me, I like black as night background, right? And vibrant colors. That's, that's just up to you. That's just a personal preference, I guess. Some people say, this is too dark. I can't see anything, right? Um, something else I like to do is um, in this tab up here, you have time frames. And you'll be limited to what you can see on the non-paid version. On the paid version, you can see whatever time frame you want, like the 12 hour. Uh, but on the paid version, you can't, you can't see the 12 hour and that's fine. It's not a big deal. Uh, so time frames here, and then you can star these and they show up on the quick tool here, a little time saver to set your favorite uh, time frames. 
And this tool shows you the variety of displays for price. Uh, my two favorites are candles and line. And if I'm looking at line on a black background, I always like to just make that white. Again, easiest thing to see for sure. And the next thing to look at would be indicators. So for the most part, they'll have anything you can think of. Sometimes fancy stuff like uh, volume profile, maybe not uh, accessible to a free account, but you can always kind of cheat that and add scripts. Um, you can also, also just type in moving average. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You can just type in EMA or MA, but um, stuff like moving average or alligator, it'll limit you to the number of indicators you can use. But you, again, you can cheat this by finding like MA cross, for example, will add at least two inputs here. So that'll save you an indicator on the limit. And in order to access the options up here, it's, it's super tiny to see, I know, but on the upper left, you're gonna wanna click the cog, go into settings, and then you can change it to, you know, whatever whatever your favorite cross is, 1050, 5200. And then again, I always change the colors on everything to make it easier to see, no doubt about it. Vibrant, you know, again, this is up to you. I know people don't always like my color scheme, but that just makes it super easy to see for me. Something else keeping in mind you can always do is shut off price if you ever, for whatever reason, don't want to see price in um, against an indicator, for example. You know, you can shut off the volume, you can shut off indicators individually here on the I tool. And I don't always like this, this price line, so sometimes I shut that off. You can just double click pretty much anything. And I always have a hard time finding stuff in this menu. Last price line. Yeah, there it is. Okay, you can just shut that off. And if the background watermark is too heavy, turn that down. You know, obviously just you do you. Um, one thing that's good for like this MA cross, for example, let's say we want, we're watching the 1050 and we want an alert on that. You can see it shows these crosses. Like, let's make them yellow and they're already as big as they can be. That's fine. Uh, but what you can do is right click anything in trading view and hit add alert on MA cross in this case. Oh, so you need, an, you need an actual account for that, but uh, you can add alerts to anything. You can even just make a horizontal line. Let's say you're watching some level. Let's say I'm watching, I'm watching this level on Bitcoin. You can always right click it, add alert and go from there. As far as drawing is are concerned, I can never find stuff easily <laughs> when I'm looking for it, um, but everything that you're going to need kind of like Photoshop is on this left hand toolbar here and it'll take some time to figure out what it is you're using and what is useful to you personally. You know, pitchforks are big for me, obviously fib retracements. That's kind of it on uh, that panel for me. I use most of this stuff pretty frequently as well and text tools here. Uh, I really like this price label tool and again, I make this kind of like Fred Flintstone big and change all the colors, make it easy to see. Uh, black, yeah. This is more for like displaying for other people than yourself, but it helps when you're, you know, if, let's say you're measuring out a level with fibs and you're trying to pick something on a chart, the 1618. And again, I change everything on basically every indicator or anything I'm doing on the chart. So for fibs, I hate the color scheme. I hate that it's on the left side instead of the right side. So you can just switch all this. I hate that there's a uh, background at all, right? No, that makes any sense to me. But you can always edit the fib numbers here. You can un uncheck them because sometimes these are too noisy. You know, I don't really use the 3A2 fib ever or the 786 or the 236. And if you're projecting upwards, it's high to low, but you'll just kind of intuitively realize that once it's uh, once it's pointing in the direction you're, you're expecting price to go. Anyway, uh, I, I don't like this, this horizontal line here, diagonal line rather, trend line. Anyway, but the point is, for the most part, anything you're seeing that it, that's on anybody's chart is very easy to manipulate on TradingView, add it to TradingView. Um, something else you can do on the social side of things, trying to pull up a, so if you go to ideas, let's see if I can open that in a separate window. Yeah. If you go to ideas, let's say I like, I like this layout of this chart. I like whatever's on here, right? They used to have a make it mine button. I don't know where that is now. Pretty sure there's a way, unless they got rid of it. Yeah, maybe may for an actual account, 
but there's a way to actually incorporate this as your own chart. Here it is, okay. So you click the share, share button and make it mine, and then it'll add that to your account. It'll add all the indicators that you're able to use for your version of your account. You know, if I like this color scheme or whatever, and that's extremely helpful for new people who are like trying to figure out what's good for them, what's useful for them. So share, make it mine, and then it adds it to your account. But you need an actual account for that. It doesn't need to be a paid account. As far as the cloud stuff, again, you can just search anything in the, in the bar and it'll pop up. As far as what I use, I use basic cloud. And obviously my cloud looks way different than this color wise. Cause again, I change everything, whatever you like looking at, right? Against the black background for me, it just makes sense to make everything a little bit clearer, but this is just an example of what you can do to get to that, that level, right? That level of Ichimoku that we all strive to get to. Um, I don't typically use the lagging span and again, completely modular. If you don't like something on an indicator, just turn it off. Don't use it. Right. And to change the settings, it's always going to be in the inputs part. Uh, I use 20, 60, 120, 30. Boom. There you go. 2060. Something else you can do, like if you want this to forever be your version, you can save it as default. And then anytime you add it to a chart, you can pop it up as the default. And this, this annoying pop-up will happen a lot. Apparently if you are on an unpaid account, so keep that in mind. Something else I'll say is a lot of this, you can copy and paste, you know, you can copy and paste any indicator. I can move indicators in between these browser panes or these uh, training view panes. If you ever see, you know, somebody has an oscillator or open interest above or below price in a separate pane, you can just click on that, move to new existing pane below, whatever. You can adjust your axes to percentages. If you are looking at things like rate of change between two values, you can also compare. So if I want to compare ETH to BTC, um, you can use the same scale, you can use a different scale, you can move those scales uh, left or right. All this is like nitty gritty setting up uh, trading view, but hey, that's what this video is all about. And you can play with the time frames, move things up and down. So that's a compare function. And as far as oscillators like RSI are concerned, again, those get added uh, to the bottom of your chart in this separate pane. And I always like, of course, changing the colors and everything. So I'll change this to white, extra thick. And it's just easier to see that way for me. Something else you can do with uh, PineScript, or if you're familiar with code at all, um, it's fairly easy to use, but you can always, again, make stuff yours. If you like an indicator or if you see an indicator that's publicly available, you can make it mine and then adjust it from there. One example of this I do is that two year MA multiplier. I don't even know if it's going to pop up um, on a non paid version or a free version. There it is, two year MA multiplier. Okay, well, let me add it. But you can add this, or you can just add the code, copy the code, look at the code. Um, you can copy paste this into a new Pine script and then change it the code, right? You can add stuff, subtract stuff. So that's one example of, that I do for this. Another example is the Bollinger Band with code. Another example is like GBTC premium code in Notional or percent. You know, you can you can play around with that. Slightly more advanced, but very doable with PineScript. They also have strategy testing, which I haven't paid around, played around too much with, but you can do things like uh, look at the, you know, the 1050 MA cross, right? If I add this here and I think you have to add it to, all right, well, it wouldn't let me do it, but there's a way to do it <laughs> with a, with an actual account. I think, uh, one last thing I'll mention is the crypto screener. So they've stock screener, crypto screener, Forex screener. You can pull this up in a full pane as well. Uh, but what this allows you to do, I'm just zooming in because I hate tiny font, it drives me nuts. You can add uh, trend following indicators, oscillators, and if you want, for example, RSI greater than 20 or lower than 20, you can sort this by, um, let's say BTC pairs that I want where an RSI is below 20 and we want volume at whatever, right? You know, you can go down the list and look at your oscillators. You can look at Ichimoku stuff as well. 
that's somewhere in here at least i've used it before here it is i don't think you, you can change the ichimoku levels here but there's a way to finagle this to where you can dial it in super strong to a degree that makes sense for you um, one thing that i used this mainly for was was three months three month performance because it's been shown that when alts are when a majority of alts are 300 percent in the 90 day window that it's definitely a alt season and currently you know obviously that's not the case most alts are down uh, considerably on the usd pairs and i don't know why it's giving me these weird pairs it was definitely the crypto screener uh, but anyway those are some of the things you can do if you have more questions i can always talk about it on any individual videos um something else that i don't use is the financial stuff um you know you can use this for a ton of stuff that kind of nobody that i know uses it for most mostly it's just used for charting but you can also add like brokerages to this for trading directly on the chart but in general most people use this simply for indicators for prices for looking at crypto TradingView was one of the first websites that used crypto information widely in a free way for everybody to look at it which is kind of how it became so popular in the crypto community and they're pretty good at adding new stuff you can just talk to them on twitter and they'll kind of implement whatever you want so I hope this was helpful that's all for this one like dislike comment share subscribe happy trading